<coughs> I knew that this would be a very interesting meeting and it is. We've had two excellent presentations. Now the floor is open for interventions from the floor. <coughs> Any questions? Uh, one of the yeah. things that uh, while listening to you, I felt perhaps one of the things is that the flow of the river is not even round the year because of the rainfall pattern. And this sort of a thing I had considered in my organization. Speaking to them. We felt that if we were to increase the water, surface water, by bringing in some of the underground water which has gone down, you could possibly flush the material quickly and, and it could be also centrifugally uh, taken out onto the sites. That is a very long drawn out thing, but to my mind, taking uh, the, the Russian uh, example in the Ural Mountains, where the underground water, which was there from the Ural Mountains, they simply were losing it, like we are losing in India and also in Nepal, certain areas of Nepal. Now, if that was to be dammed, underground dams, which they created very simply by putting ex explosion and stopping this, uh, the flow, and the water came up to the surface. Now, that fresh water had a lot of potential to take care of the sewage and other things to dilute it. And, and then the whole area of that particular area, Ural Mountains, today is so flourishing with uh, cotton and others. Why can't we think? And there has been already a survey in India where a lot of our underground rivers that were there, like Saraswati, have become underground rivers because of the seismic activity. Now, if you can block those and get the water on to the surface, I think uh, you will have fo formed a lot of lakes. And in those lakes, there's the natural control by actually uh, the fish and also the in, in Rajasthan, they use in wells tortoise to clean the water. And that would be, I think, a very uh, economical way of doing it by just putting an explosion and, and stopping it, the, uh, blocking the river underground flow, bring it up on the surface, and you will have more water around the year uh, rather than what you have today, which is seasonal. I think I'll be just come forward. Mr. Jawali, you were talking about uh, multiple organizing types as a solution. Um, given the amount of rain that Kathmandu itself receives, I'm wondering whether there are any initiatives at local water harvesting and whether at all you think uh, that might succeed. And the second is perhaps more of a comment than a question, but I've never been able to understand why we in this region, Indians and probably Nepalis too, are so ashamed of the Indian toilet that we have whole scale replaced it, even though it functions better, whether physiologically or in terms of the amount of water it consumes. Uh, yeah, first is, I mean, the technical solution that you said, one of the things about these multiple types of organizing is that it does not deny some of these technical things, but at the same time it says, just don't make one technical solution alone your mission, you know. Make it multiple, what we call many 10% solutions. In Kathmandu's case, what we're saying is, Yes, there are, like uh, the ponds technology, some of us have been advocating for a long time. It, there is enough evidence in the, in the southern Bagmati uh, 
that's northern Bagmati from your perspective, but in Kathmandu Valley, the southern end of it. There was work done on Bagmati watershed for about 15 years that showed that just building ponds on ridge tops, you know, I just get a group of 10 women and, you know, just give them 2,000, 3,000, 5,000, whatever rupees, and they dig up this thing, and that's enough water collected there, harvested for their buffaloes, and so on and so forth. The amazing thing that turned out was. In the city? No, it's in the surrounding hills. Would it around be, the city, would yeah. It be possible in the city? Uh, well, it's if you do it in the surrounding hills, as we tried one in one of them around North uh, Shivapuri, and we tried in a few other areas, it turns out if you could do it on a better scale, I, we've calculated that if you use one and a half percent of Kathmandu Valley's 600 square kilometer area, that's enough to capture something like, uh, you know, six percent of your monsoon uh, rain, and that gives you a lot more than this trans basin transfer. Okay. Seem to provide, uh, they seem to stop landslides and the, with hindsight the explanation is quite simple because the erosive power of water is to the power of four and by building these ponds on top what seems to have happened is that they prevent the peak of the water from causing more landslides you know and then maize production was sort of 50 percent more simply because soil moisture was retained much better. So there are these kind of technologies that should be done, but they're thinking it's not, it's anathema to the kind of hydrocracies we have created to go for these kind of multiple, many 10% solutions. Water harvesting, ponds, groundwater recharge, uh, traditional technologies, recycling, changing flush toilets into the kind of, uh, you know, less water using toilets that, you know, is probably far more hygienic because you, you know, no part of your body touches uh, the, the, the equipment there. It's far more hygienic. But you know this, and but this comes about from this change in sort of mindset and a cultural value system. Okay, so these kind of uh, technologies, if allowed space, and each one of the technology carriers are very different sociologically. A cement contract. Uh, civil engineering led department will never think in terms of ponds or you know recycling or something like that so there is these multiple types of organizing it's going on you know my own house i've got a 32000 liter water harvesting tank which seems to meet about 60% of my annual water need you know but this is happening it's not a full solution i need to buy tankers after well, otherwise but 60% solution is very good i think compared to 0% solution you know instead of me buying water 12 months a year, I do it only, let's say, four or five months a year. So this is the kind of argument that we're saying we should be trying and allowing different institutional modalities to do these things.